What's good, fam? This is your boy, Reverend Cal Vaughn, and welcome to Trinity's Youth Hour. Oh, yeah. Where can you go to find a word from the Lord? Trinity's Youth Hour. Where can you go to find hope? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, I miss you all so much. I miss you all so much, young people. Oh, but I'm so grateful for technology that we are what, able to bring the word of God into your homes. I need you to do something. Share this video. Come on, go get your other friends, your cousins. Come on and tell them to pull up, hallelujah, a seat. Come on so they can enjoy Trinity's Youth Hour. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Find a word from the Lord. Trinity Youth Hour. Oh, where do I go to find hope? Trinity Youth Hour. Oh, where do I go to find a word from the Lord? Trinity Youth Hour. Oh, where do I go to find hope? Trinity Youth Hour. Oh, where do I go to find a word from the Lord? Yeah. Trinity Youth Hour. Oh, where do I go to find hope?
to Trinity's Youth Hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need y'all to share this video. Parents, go get your, your children, your grandbabies. Kids, I need you to get your sisters and your brothers. I need you to get your cousins. Come on, I need y'all to share this video right now. Glory to God, because you know Trinity, amen, Youth Hour. We have a great word, hallelujah, and a story in store for you. Today, we're going to be talking about answering, hallelujah, your call. Answering your call. Come on, somebody. Answering the call of God and standing before the pharaohs of your life. My, 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 this is going to be good. This is going to be good. I need you to understand something. Each and every one of you have a calling on your life. The calling is not going to be easy sometimes because today we're going to talk about Moses who, hallelujah, was called. Most of the time, I posit young people that the calling is so great that sometimes we don't want to do it. That God will call to you uh, a lot of times to things you don't want to necessarily do. Who y'all don't want to hear me? Yeah, a calling is, it, 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 it is something that uh, demands your, your, your mind, body, and soul. And it's not always going to be ice cream and cookies. Uh-uh. It's going to cause you to have to make sacrifices. It's going to cause you sometimes to have to leave certain friends. It's going to cause you, glory to God, to do, hallelujah, the things you never thought you would do. And young people, if anyone knows about what it means to answer a difficult call, it's you. I have never, and a lot of your grown folks, they have never truly, truly had to deal with a call in the midst of a pandemic. I know I haven't. I haven't endured a pandemic when I was you all's age. You were having to go to school. You, some of you all have started school or have started school. Online. Virtual learning. And look, don't get me wrong, we're, we're grateful for it, you know. But it takes away from being around your friends and being able to be in community you know, we were, I don't believe God intended for us uh, to not live in community, for you all not to be in school with your friends. That's a calling that we don't ask for. That's an experience we don't ask for. And as, as your youth pastor, my heart, as your youth pastor, my heart goes out to you. We stand with you here at Trinity United Church of Christ. We love you. And we know that this particular season and the call that God may be calling you to is not easy. And that's why I love Moses. A lot of people paint this as you better just answer God's call. No, it's not that easy. And if people will be real with you, all of us have had our moments of running. <laughs> Come on. Quiet as it's kept. Reverend Jones is still running in some areas. <laughs> Y'all don't want to be real. God is still calling us. God's going to keep calling you to things throughout your life until the breath goes out of your body. God's going to keep calling you to stuff. And, 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 and sometimes it's difficult. But God gives you the strength to endure. And that's why we're going to be talking about Amen Moses today, particularly his call story. And when he had to stand before Pharaoh. We're not going through the whole uh, uh, literary body of, uh, uh, of Moses. We're going to talk about the call and when he had to stand before Pharaoh, 
So I think in this season, we relate to Moses. God, I don't want to do this. Come on. God, I don't want to do this. This pandemic, God, what? You want me to do this? You want me to have to serve you in this regard? You want me to have to do this uh, particular job or this particular schooling? God, I, I don't want to do and, and a lot of us don't want to be real. Come on, Reverend Jones ain't going to be, you know, trying to be super religious right now. No, I'm going to be real. A lot of times we don't want to do it. And Moses' life, young people, teaches us that sometimes you do not choose the calling. The calling chooses you. I want y'all to think about that. Sometimes you don't choose the calling. It chooses you. Moses didn't want to go and stand before Pharaoh. Come on here. He didn't want to have to deal with all of these things, but the calling was so powerful that he could not resist it. He was, he had fear. He was scared. He felt like he was not good enough. He was inadequate. He felt like, God, I can't speak as well. But the calling is so great, young people, that you won't be able to resist it. It's almost like a fire in your belly. And it's my hope for you today that throughout all that you're going through right now, that you still remain focused on the call. Yeah, I know it's hard right now staring in front of a laptop or a tablet or a phone. I, I, I can't imagine. I, I, I can't imagine. I, I, know, I know it's difficult. But God said, stay focused because there's a great calling. God is calling for you to still be that great man and great woman, that great child during this pandemic. Because when this pandemic passes, there is something that God wants you to come out of this pandemic with. Come on, somebody. So today we're going to be talking about answering the call so you can stand up, glory to God, before the pharaohs of your life. Come on. You got pharaohs in your own life that you got to deal with. And we're going we're gonna to do the Calvin Jones version with with Moses and Pharaoh today. Y'all ready? All right, here we go. The call story of Moses. The Calvin Jones' version. Now Moses was like, you know, I'm just chilling. You know, I'm on this you know, side of the wilderness, you know, with my father-in-law, Jethro. You know, I'm just chilling, you know, trying to enjoy life, trying to handle my work, you know, and uh, I'm just trying to, you know, do what God has called me to do, you know, in this area. I'm not looking for nothing else. You know, I'm just chilling. So, Moses goes to Horeb. Mm-hmm. That was a mountain. You know, he wanted to see the beauty and, you know, enjoy the day. Then an angel appeared to Moses in flames of fire with the bush. Moses was like, oh my God, do I need to call the fire truck? <laughs> Moses saw this bush then he was like, but the bush is not burning up. What is this? It's on fire, but it's not burning. Moses thought, Whew, let me go over here and see what in the world it's really about. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I need to go take a nap. Maybe I'm tired. You know, maybe I need to go to the hospital because I am seeing things. When the Lord saw that Moses had gone over to look at the bush, God said, Moses, what's good, Moses? <laughs> what's good, Moses? And Moses like, who in the world is that speaking to me? I'm here. I'm right here. I'm right here. And God said, don't, 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 don't come any closer. Don't come any closer, bro. I need you to take off your shoes, take off your sandals, because the place you're standing on is holy. 
This is holy ground. I need you to take off your shoes. Take off your sandals. Then God said, and I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm the God of your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who I am. And then Moses was like, oh, my God. This is the real deal. This, this God is real. Moses then hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. And God said, look, I've seen the misery of the people on the south side of Egypt. I've heard them crying out because they've been enslaved. I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to help rescue them, to take them to a land that's spacious and good, flowing with milk and honey. I've heard this cry. I'm tired of the racism, tired of the police, police brutality. I'm tired of, of gentrification. I'm tired of all they're facing. I'm tired of the food deserts. I'm tired of the educational system that's not looking out for, for, for those who are kissed by the sun. I'm tired. And Moses, I'm going to send you to go to Pharaoh to bring the Israelites out. I need you to go and stand before Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. God said, I'm going to be with you. But Moses said, who am I? Who in the world am I? I'm nobody. Why are you picking me? I don't want to do this. To stand before Pharaoh. Do you know how mean Pharaoh is? And God responded again, I'm going to be with you. And this will be a sign for you that people will know that it was me that was with you that brought the people out of Egypt. Moses said, but God, suppose I go to the Israelites and they ask me who sent me. What do they say? What is the name of your God that sent you? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And you tell them the great I am has sent me to you. Then God said, now go get the elders, go get Aaron, go get the people so you can stand before Pharaoh. I need you to go now. Get them together so you can travel and go before Pharaoh. And Moses still was grunting. I can't speak that well, God. What if they don't believe in me? Why, can, why should I go to them and to, and to Pharaoh? And God said, what is that in your hand? He replied, a staff. And God said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. And he ran from it. And God said, this is going to be used to make them believe. Put it in your hand. Use it. Use what you got in your hand. Answer the call. Moses, Moses once again said, well, I'm not eloquent, God. I can't speak that well. And God said, look, I'm the one who gave you your speech. I'm the one who made you. Go and speak my words. I will send Aaron with you, but you are capable. You are worthy. You have the ability. Moses was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this, God. But eventually he said yes. He met with the elders and he met with Aaron. And afterwards they went to Pharaoh, Moses and Aaron. Moses said, this is what the Lord says to you, Pharaoh. Let my people go. Let them go. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? Who is the Lord? Huh? But Moses told them who God was and who the people of God was. Moses, that they stood before Pharaoh. And although Pharaoh did not believe at that moment, Moses had done what God had told him to do. He answered the call. My God, my God. Well, 
What pharaohs are you facing today? Huh? What pharaohs are y'all facing today? I want you to know I'm facing a few right now. Name them. Fear. Doubt. Confusion. Racism. Microaggressions. Hate. Jealousy. Bitter. White supremacy. Police brutality. Gun violence. Uh, loneliness. Uh, depression. You may be facing suicidal thoughts. You may be dealing with mental illness, whatever it may be. These are real pharaohs that we must deal with as we pursue that which God has called us to. When, as we pursue the call, God is giving you the power like Moses to stand up against those pharaohs, look those pharaohs in the face. So you got to come down. You have to come down. In the name of Jesus, you have to come down. Come on, young people, you got to speak to it. Come on. You got to speak to it and say, I refuse to allow these things to consume me. They do not define me. But I have power. I have resources. I have a community. I have a village. Come on, I have therapists. I have social works. Uh, I have counselors, I have pastors, come on somebody. I, I have the resources to help me to stand up against this Pharaoh. God, I know you're able and I know you can. So young people, I want you right now to name some things you're struggling with right now. You may write them down or you may speak them out right now. Come on, name them. What things are you dealing with right now? What trouble are you facing right now? Come on. I want you to lift them up to God right now. Hallelujah. I know it sounds like you hear an alarm. I know it sounds like you, you can hear the trouble coming. Come on, you hear that, you hear that alarm? Do you hear it? It, it? It's like trouble is coming. It's like it's coming on every side. But don't, don't be uh, scared. Sometimes the sound of an alarm means help is on the way. Let's go to God in prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help is on the way. Glory to God. Ooh, I felt that. Help is coming to your house. Help is coming to your house, young person. Young people is coming to you. God's going to take you through. Don't you let people, amen, make you feel like you ain't going through a lot. Yes, you are. You're going through a whole lot. Glory to God. Your generation is stronger than we, amen, may think. We try to call y'all entitled. We try to do so much, uh, but we need to, amen, begin to honor you and value you and lift you up that you are making it through a pandemic. Help is coming. Help is coming. Strength is coming. God, we we, we just honor you right now for this youth hour. We thank you, oh God, for the ways that you've made. We thank you for how you've moved for our young people, oh God, through all that they're going through. Hallelujah. Having, hallelujah, to, to, to learn virtually, oh God. Having, oh God, to uh, adapt to these new ways, oh God, while they are living in fear and scared for their black life because so much is going on around them socially. Huh? God, we want you to send help Oh God, send help to our young people, oh God, where they're weak, make them strong, oh God, this morning in the name of Jesus. God, I know you can, oh God, and I know, oh God, you will, because if you did it before, God, you will do it again. God, whatever the Pharaoh may be, give us the strength, oh God, to deal with it and to overcome it. It may be depression. We speak to it. It may be mental illness. We speak to it. It may be suicidal thoughts. We speak to it. 
It may be, be, oh God, anger and bitterness and rejection and loneliness and anxiety. God, we speak to it. In the name of Jesus, we speak, oh God, to those mountains and we cover our young people right now. Oh God, we cover them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, the devil will not have them. The enemy will not have them. But oh God, our young people shall live and not die. They shall live to declare the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we speak now, Lord. Have your way in their lives. Bring them, oh God, out of whatever they're facing. Give them the power to say yes to the call. Give them power to say yes to the will of God. Oh God, oh God, we come now, not out of formal fashion. Somebody may think, why is Reverend Calvin doing all of that? I'm covering our babies. I'm covering our young people because prayer still works. Prayer changes things in the name of Jesus. Come on, deacons. Come on, adults. If you're watching right now, come on, cover your young people. Parents, if you're next to your kids, lay hands on your kids. In the name of Jesus, grandparents, lay hands on your sons. Lay hands on your grandsons. Lay hands on your grandchildren and say, you shall live. You shall answer the call. The enemy will not have you. In the name of Jesus, the weapons may form, but the word of God says they shall not prosper. We speak and declare now that every assignment of the enemy, every scheme, every plot, we break it in the name of Jesus. We bind it now and we speak life, we speak joy, we speak peace, and we speak positivity. We speak dreams are coming to pass. We speak aspirations are coming to pass. We speak life on every endeavor and we speak your holiness. We speak your anointing and we speak your shalom. Do it for us, oh God. Do it for us, oh God. We'll continue to praise you evermore. We'll lift your name on high. Come on, young people, and bless the Lord right there. Answer the call because trouble doesn't last always. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, uh, come on now. Do you believe that trouble doesn't last always? Woo!
Trouble doesn't last all. No, 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 trouble don't last all. Right now, 